We'll sit in draft yeah. possibilities by a fair amount. Yeah, and as soon as Pawn hits the lineup, it is going to be the LeBlanc ban straight away. Vici, do not want to allow him on that champion. Of course, Pawn is just ridiculous in the laning phase and moving around the map and creating plays is what he's all about. It's just incredible to see. Of course, Rexai going to be banned away here. Dandy not going to be able to first pick that one. And of course, Clearlove did pick up a whole lot of his victories over at MSI. Of course, the most recent time that we saw EDG before their first game here at the LPL is on that Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai a massive pick here for this team. Yeah, you need to get that away as soon as possible. Dandy's played the most games out of every other jungler on that Rek'Sai, so take it off the tables as soon as possible. It doesn't narrow his champ pool by any means. He's very no. similar to what you would call pawn as mid laners as Dandy did in the jungle. Yeah, but he's getting rid of the strongest champion, much like the LeBlanc ban here, away from pawn. Yeah, and also Jinx is going to hit the bench. Def not going to be able to play that champion. We'll see whether the Sivir is going to be Respond banded here. Banded? Respond banned. <laughs> Response banned. Response banned, I think is what I meant to say. Yeah, you're exactly yeah. right. It's like, I knew something went wrong, <laughs> but apparently both things went wrong. Is Civic going to be banned is my question for EDG, whether they're going to take that away from Endless, because he has had relative success on that champion. Azir, though, is what it's going to be. Hatong, not going to see that champ. And Vici, they have an opportunity to first pick the Sivir if they want to, but Gragas is also there. There's a lot of high priority picks. Cassiopeia now available with Azir off the table. And Sivir, definitely worth yeah. mentioning, has been banned in the first game. And has an amazing win to loss ratio <laughs> in the LPL. <laughs> that was amazing. Jay did not waste any time. <laughs> no hesitation whatsoever. Taking it away from Carry as well as picking it up for himself with literally zero hesitation. Yeah, and Amazing Jay and Insect, I believe, were the sort of first people to start playing the um, Hecarim again, both in the top lane and in the jungle. But Amazing Jay has done wonderful things on that champion throughout the LPL. Of course, very very early on was always tended to be banned away. Of course, has moved over to Smite Teleport as opposed to the Ignite Teleport that Amazing Jay was sort of known for. But Clear Love is going to lock away Mako's Thresh and leave everything open. Of course, you pick a Hecarim and a Thresh, you can still play almost any, any comp. It doesn't really matter. Exactly. It doesn't reveal anything that you're looking to play just yet. And the Sivir being picked, very good versatile all-around AD carry, provides a lot for team fighting, does a lot of damage. And with the Azir band, and the Cassiopeia available, I definitely like this decision. Yeah, I like it too, but I'm actually interested as to why Clearlove didn't lock away the Gragas. Now seeing the fact that Dandy has locked that in very, very quickly, Hatong is going to pick up the Nah here for carry. Of course, didn't have to lock that one away. Of course, Amazing J almost definitely is going to be playing that champion there in the top lane. But look, Already, this engage comp is looking fantastic coming through from Vici, and they can disengage with the explosive cask if they want to. Yeah, they've got the Sivir ultimate to disengage also if need be, and even yeah. the scoop from the Nah. They've yeah. got a lot potentially, and may not be directly, but they are able to disengage quite well as we're getting an Eve hover. Yeah, the Eve hover is there, of course, Clearlove's favorite champion, or at least one of his historically most played, and no surprises, he is going to lock that one in. And Deft going over to his comfort pick as well. Of course, Deft's Corky, an absolutely pivotal part of his champion roster. And man, so much comfort here. And if you're looking at EDG and thinking about what Pawn's going to play there in the mid lane, and I'm thinking maybe, you know, Twisted Fate, the likes of Fizz, something like that here for Pawn if he wants to play that. And we'll see what he does bring to the mid lane. Of course, Talon, it might be the time. Maybe it's his game. I don't know. But I would not really say the talent is worthwhile in this game. If we have a look at the side of EDG... Oh, I never said it was a good idea. I it's just it was an fun. idea. Yeah, <laughs> true. I don't think they're playing for fun at this stage, though. Let's go with having a look at their team comp right now and what they're actually missing and what they need is maybe even a bit of crowd control. They've got the Evelyn jungle. Thresh yeah. the AD carry. He's got the hook, and then they've got the, the Hecarim ultimate. But aside from that, there's no real hard, dedicated engage or crowd control spell. So with this mid lane pick, you might want to even go for the Twisted Fate, as you mentioned first. Something that's just reliable and able to be used well and often. Yeah, and of course, if you are gonna, going to play something like that, <laughs> as he hovers the Katarina, I can't believe I didn't mention Katarina when you're talking about Pawn, of course. Even playing that last year at Worlds, the Varus well, still reliable an CC. option. I mean. That's true. Chains of Corruption, most definitely a thing. Mako, only one second ago. Looks like the Varus might indeed be the option here. And of course, you can create a lot of distance between you and the Cassiopeia with the fact that that piercing arrow is super long range. 
And look, we're going to have it again. Pawns, Varus mid. Yeah, and while I said it was reliable CC, it's also the most often misspelled statistic. Yeah, I was going to say reliable, probably no. not the term that you'd associate <laughs> with Chains of Corruption, but... Immediate regret as mentioning that. But the Varus <laughs> is locked in. The team comps are complete here from both sides. And it's a very interesting, to say the least, team composition yeah. coming out from EDG. It's a whole lot of everything, but not a lot of anything in particular. What they do have is a lot of poke and potential to catch people in bad positions. Yeah, well, this is the thing. Maybe they've got this sort of poke-them-down comp with mostly the rockets and, of course, the piercing arrows as we go over the lineup. And then when you want to pull the trigger, you run in with the Agony's Embrace and, of course, the Onslaught of Shadows there coming from the top lane. And you can really make a fight happen once you've sort of got the other members a little bit ready to, for death, if that makes any sense. Pawn and Hatong. You can see facing off there in the mid lane, an exciting matchup as Endless into Deft. Deft actually picking up the Corky into the Sivir. We'll see how this one is going to work. Of course, Spell Shields for the Phosphorus Bomb is going to help Endless out just a little bit. Marta versus Mako. Marta, fantastic Nautilus player. And Nautilus just in general, a pretty high impact support. Definitely high impact. And you can compare it to that of the Thresh. It's got the hook available and a lot of shields and tanky stats. And yeah. lower cooldown, higher base damage is what we'd say Nautilus has. And the ultimate is just so good for engaging. There's nothing that you can really use to get away from no. it. You We've can... seen people flash. Yeah. Doesn't get you away. No, you can flash, you can rift walk, you can do whatever the heck you want. You can try and move as far as you can, but it's still going to find you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a terrifying thing. But ladies and gentlemen, let's get onto the rift. Okay, Clearlove moving out onto the rift as EDG are taking on Vici Gaming for the final game of the night. We do have a pause. It would not be the LPL without a little bit of a pause, but EDG looking to make this another 2-0 victory, and they've got a lot of comfort here. Of course, Mako's Thresh is fantastic, but I mean, you're looking at Clearlove here on Evelyn, his classic comfort pick. Deft's Corky, of course, is just almost synonymous with Deft. You almost say Deft when people are picking Corky. Yeah and things like this. Of course, Pawn is on an unorthodox champion in the mid lane. That seems to be his comfort pick. And <laughs> Amazing Jay's playing Hecarim. There's so much comfort on this lineup. Yeah, there's actually a lot of comfort. And I guess it's weird to say that the Varus mid is a comfort pick, but it's <laughs> yeah. certainly the second time in four games. That's Always, true. I think almost three, the most consistent. No, in two games for him, isn't it? Both times that he's played, it has been the Varus mid. Oh, really? Of course. Oh, well, of course. Yeah, because Bami played the other games. Yeah, so it couldn't be more of a comfort pick ever. No, in fact, if we're looking at only this split of the LPL, there is no other choice if you're looking at comfort picks for Pawn in the mid lane. And a 100% win rate on top of that. Yeah, well, 100% play rate, 100% <laughs> win rate. No worries. My goodness, of course, there is Deft looking very excited about getting into this video game. Of course, we haven't had very much time yet. There's not a whole lot to talk about as far as uh, how this game is going to unfold, but Vici, we're going to try and turn this one around. We've spoken about EDG at length, but with the Gnar, with the Gragas, and of course Cassiopeia plus the Sivir, the On the Hunt is going to be used to great effect because you're going to be able to get your Nautilus in amongst it. You're going to be able to get the Gnar in amongst it, really start these fights out. And do you think this is what Vici want to be doing? They want to be sort of hard engaging after the level six is hit? Definitely. Vici seem to be the kind of side that love to just straight away hard engage and go in and commit all at once. They are an all or nothing style team and they either win together or they lose together. So this bad team boys for life. <laughs> yes, bad boys for life. It suits them perfectly. They're going to be able to use that on the hunt. They've got a lot of things to follow it up. The Gragas, the Nautilus, everything just in the face of EDG. Their team comp is very synergetic when it comes to fighting like that. And it's going to be very, very easy and they're quite capable of doing so. Yeah, and we'll see whether they can get that one to work. And of course, you do have to change your mindset. They're up against Clearlove on the Evelyn at this point. And with a comp like this, is it difficult to deal with an Evelyn or is it sort of going to work out? Because we haven't seen too much. I guess we've seen sort of Evelyn and Kakao running around on the Evelyn a little bit just recently. But is it going to be difficult for them to move into that style of play with this comp? It's not going to be difficult for them per se, but they do have to adjust the way that they're playing completely. Every time that you play against an Eve, it's a very unique style. And we've seen a lot of pink wards that have to come out early to adjust to having the Eve there. You need to rethink your strategies and rethink where you're placing wards, for example, or invade times or where you need to be as the opposition jungler. Like, Gragas is going to be safe and healthy, but he needs to be where Eve's going to be to be able to win a counter gank and make her hurt early when she's weak. 
Yeah, well, we'll see whether it does come through as Deft and Mako looking to try and face check this one in. They do put a ward down. Endless just going to put a ward of his own, but Pawn is here to help out clearing that one. And EDG setting up camp. But it is going to be just a defensive fan here for Vichy Gaming, and they did get some vision. They know it's only a few members there, although I guess they have no idea where Clear Love is, so it could have been four people. Yeah, for all they knew, it could have been basically everyone from EDG. And a small moral victory there going to Pawn, having that first little bit of gold advantage with the one CS. And yeah, first CS. No also a bit of vision denial. So you can see instantly Siva could not hang around that spot anymore. The rest of EDG were comfortable even sitting in the tri-bush for a few seconds, and they've actually grouped up as five and looking to invade. Yeah, looking to Four invade, other. potentially even into a lane swap here as well as Pawn. He's going to move around, possibly get a piercing light over, but clear love. Probably just going to move straight towards that red buff. And Vichy Gaming, they're not <laughs> allowing clear love to do anything this game. No, straight away, going into the red buff, even warding the Krugs away from Hecarim if he chose to start those. Too much pressure on the map. And they've gonna, they're going to enact the lane swap. Vichy Gaming are now in the top lane. They're AD carry and support duo. You can see the response right now is Eve hasn't gone to her blue buff. Eve has gone to the opposition red buff. She's in Vichy's jungle. She's going to take that away with the Thresh to help. Yeah, and Amazing J actually going to utilize his smite to take away some wolves here as well. So not even in a lane just yet. Of course, the double jungle now moving towards the top side of the map. Amazing J does have to be careful because if he teleports into the top lane, he's going to die. Yeah, and he needs to be aware of that fact and smartly not teleporting just yet. And based off knowing that they started at the red buff, you wouldn't want to teleport there whatsoever because that is a death trap waiting to happen. Most definitely not. Clear love and Amazing J are going to find one another. They have cleared out a whole bunch of the enemy jungle here as well, heading over to their blue buff at this stage as Pawn just shooting off long-range spells at her tongue, and her tongue just getting a little bit annoyed at it. Doesn't quite manage to find the poison there, but this is about how this lane is going to go. It's going to be her tongue trying to get into the face of Pawn, and Pawn just shooting him. Well, as we mentioned in the last matchup, the Azir Cassiopeia, this tends to run in a very similar style. You need to respect Cassiopeia's early game, and you can see how aggressively she's positioning in the face of Pawn to really show him that you need to respect this Cassiopeia, or there is the threat of dying. Yeah, pawn has been using a lot of his mana on those piercing lights to try and get harass damage off. He's got a huge stack of minions now heading towards this turret. Hatong doing a decent job keeping up in the farm here as well. Of course, Pawn, he's able to kill a few underneath the turret, but Hatong playing this one out very, very well. Tong definitely had his Wheaties this morning. He's playing well. Yeah, he's showing what it takes to be in the LPL right now. Vichy Gaming didn't have the greatest showing in the first two. They did come up one and one, but right now, even though they've gone down in game one to Edward Gaming, they look exceptional coming into late game and team fight stages. Their team comp is perfectly suited to that and the way that they're going to play. So, so far, they're looking okay. Yeah, and we'll see whether they can carry that through. Of course, EDG don't necessarily have a whole lot of synergy as far as the team comp is concerned, as clearly is able to get some vision in there as the ward doesn't quite spot out Amazing J, I don't think. Marta is going to discover Mako as carry comes around as well. The dragon was started. Hyperprox now a plenty as the flay comes back. There's the death sentence. Deft comes through and massive amounts of damage. There's EDG. They give first blood over to Clear Love and they're going to transition into a dragon as well. And you have to love how the, the inability to actually spot the Eve placing the ward deep in the Wraith jungle near that bush has allowed them to walk all the way through the river unnoticed and catch someone out of position. Marta unfortunately hooking the wall instead of his target and instantly the rotation, everyone comes there and Pawn's taken a bit of damage from Dandy apparently. Yeah, Pawn able to answer back in kind though. You can see there's the piercing light, the, the piercing arrow, sorry, the last possible one that he's going to be throwing out just because he doesn't have a whole lot of mana, able to chug through some of these flasks for maybe an extra one. You can see Pawn has pressured her tongue effectively out of this lane. Has sacrificed a few bits of CS for it, and Clear Love, he secured the early dragon. Oh, cute. Steals away three of the little popcorn chickens. Getting a little bit of extra CS there for himself. They do give quite a bit of gold now. Ten gold per chicken, I believe, which is yeah. fantastic. An improvement of what they used to be. And Pawn, he's level five now. He's in a very good position. The, the piercing arrows start to do a lot more damage, and... The Varus starts to ramp up the later that this game goes, the higher the level that he gets. And Cassiopeia having not been able to pressure him out, the CS remaining very similar, 
is a very good sign so far for Pawn. Yeah, and since uh, Zareth sort of fell out, I mean, a lot of what I see uh, Varus as being is sort of another massive range siege unit. Mm. You don't necessarily have Arcano Pulse, but that piercing arrow does some work. Deft is going to get caught out by Marty here as the Riptide is going to come through. The Ignite is ticking down, but they only got the heal for it as Carry didn't quite have the follow-up damage. No, they're not going to be able to secure the kill, but level 2 Marta will take a lot of damage from the turret and the hooks if they consistently hit right now. Yeah, Deft not quite able to get too far in front of it as nice little uh, juggling of the turret aggro in order to steal away all of that farm. 52 to 46 as far as the AD carries are concerned. Carry moving towards the blue buff here of EDG as Pawn heads back into lane. Does have just a tier and, of course, a pink ward there as well. Plus a longsword, so probably going towards that Brutalizer, then into the Man Immune. Sort of the general cooldown reduction plus armor penetration build that a lot of these Varus players have been going for. Yeah, exactly. You want the cooldown reduction. May even want to go for the Mana Regen. Once you finish that tier as soon as possible, have a bigger Mana Are you pool. saying Essence Reaver? I might be saying Essence Reaver. Oh my goodness. It is a very good Varus item, and it complements what he's looking to achieve as a mid Varus to You're a now T. officially my favorite co-caster. <laughs> because you've just said that Essence Reaver is a good idea. Of course, if anyone understands the history between Atlas and Essence Reaver, you'll understand what we're talking about, but I'm not going to explain it because it actually hurts people's feelings. Patong is going to take another piercing arrow here in the mid lane as the hail comes down as well. And Deft is going to be clearing out these minions. And how does the, the build path go as far as skill order for um, a mid Varus? Is it sort of max Q, then max UW, the blighted quiver? quiver? You would ideally max Q, and from there, as he's actually using his ultimate that gets cleansed out, you would choose to max the Q, and then it's up to personal opinion, I suppose. You do like maxing the E. It does base damage, and you can keep at least level 1 of the W there, do a bit of extra damage with each hit. You don't necessarily need to upgrade it first, though it does come down to a bit of personal preference. The important part is that you max your piercing arrow. Yeah, the Piercing Arrow doing so much of the work as a Tong. Able to get a bit of a slow tick down there with the Miasma, and Pawn takes a couple of Twin Fangs. Oh, that's Ooh. actually the flash forward there, but Pawn turning around just at the right time. The Twin Fangs managed to cause enough pressure to cause Pawn to flash away, but somehow Pawn predicted the flash ultimate from Hatong. It was completely mind games right there. Hatong thinking that Pawn was going to push up too far just to be in his face and zone him away from the minions, and instantly using the flash petrifying gaze, but Pawn smartly backing up at the right time, knowing he was in a bad position. Oh, body slam, not gonna find Pawn here as well as Hatong looks for the Miasma. Dandy puts him in Ooh. a bad position. Hatong almost falls down there as now Amazing Jay looking to clippity clop his way in. There's the Onslaught of Shadows, the drive-by kill onto the mid laner and he's gonna head back top. An amazing turnaround there, making a trade out of it. It took a very long time to get Pawn down and it was enough time for the Hecarim to use that teleport, get within range of the ultimate, and again, make it a very good trade out of nowhere. Yeah, Amazing Chase sort of just, yeah, it's the classic drive-by maneuver, I believe. 28 CS to 44, though, so Amazing Jay having the rough end of the stick when it comes to picking up the farm. But now that he's got some time in the mid, able to even that one out just a little bit. And speaking of picking up the farm, Endless managing to have about a 10 CS advantage. Starting to close a little bit after picking up those minions, but Sivir ahead right now in last hits. Yeah, and Deft only sitting on the Phage here, so not going for the aggressive choice of the Sheen for the trade damage. Just wanted to make sure that he's got as much health and maneuverability as possible. Pawn able to pick up a blue buff. Of course, Varus, one of the most mana-hungry champions in the game. Thank goodness he has a tier there just in order to keep his mana pool up as high as possible. And his item timing is actually really good. You can see Clear Love stalking around. I love being able to do that as a jungler. Doesn't matter what your pathing is because no one's going to spot you. And back onto Pawn, he's got the Brutalizer, he's got the tier. And most importantly, he got the blue buff with the tier, which is ideal timing because it'll stack so much quicker now. And yeah. he's going to be able to finish that mana immune a lot quicker and do ridiculous amounts of damage a lot sooner. Yeah, and we'll see whether he can get to that Mura Manor enchant as quickly as possible. Of course, the transform, very important as far as maximizing your damage potential. Piercing Arrow, a little bit optimistic there from Pawn at that stage, and Clear Love just passing through. Haven't actually seen too much from the Evelyn after that first blood did come down. Warrior enchant has been completed with the boots alongside it here for Clear Love. Just wanders casually past the ward as Mako makes his way back towards the lane. Pink Ward. 
<laughs> oh, that is very, very cute. That is great. Yeah, Mako going to clear that one out, of course. Clear love was unseen. Piercing Arrow is going to not find Hatong this time. One has been pretty good as far as hitting those, but not going to find it that one. And 93 three CS to 102 there in the bottom lane. You're right, about a 10 CS lead as Pawn uh, Deft, sorry, did make it back into the lane. Does have a Sheen now as well. So the two most important components of the Trinity Force now completed for Deft. Started up the Dragon, but opting to back out as well. Smartly backing out that the rotations were there. And this mind game in the middle lane, it's going to work out in favor of Pawn pretty much consistently from here on out. You compared it to a Zerath earlier. Yep. It is essentially a Zerath. When the, the Q starts charging, you need to dodge it because it starts to have too big of an impact. And it's the big, big mental play in your head of which way is he going to throw it. And you start to find yourself in very awkward positions and you spend too much time dodging, not enough time trading back. And the, the lane starts to tilt in favor of the Varus from here on out. Yeah, and you also can't concentrate on picking up the last hits as well as Carrie has to bounce over that wall. Amazing Jay just securing the Scuttle Crab. Hmm. We've spoken a lot about the mid lane at the moment, but the top lane seems to be going very well for this Nah. Opting towards the armor boots first, and then double health crystal with the Doran's Blade. Consistently a decent amount of CS ahead as they're going in on him. Yeah, there's the ultimate from Amazing J. Wants to use the E in order to get them back out of under the turret, but Carrie is going to survive this one. Nice use of the poison there from Maton. Gets a couple of Twin Fangs. Whereas the ult is still available here for this Cassiopeia, and that is going to mean that Pawn has to be on his toes as far as being able to turn around effectively enough. Yeah, and the cleanse, come of it yet. the cleanse available too for the Cassiopeia, which is definitely something you need to point out in the 1v1 matchup. We've seen it before in this lane, and every time that the Varus is going to use his ultimate, it's going to be cleansed instantly, and Cassiopeia can stay on your back. Yeah, Tong now going to continue to poison these minions here in the mid lane. Piercing, uh, piercing Arrow is going to clear out the rest of them for Pawn, as Twin Fang is going to be used for her Tong just to secure these minions. So bottom lane, Vici Gaming able to shove out this wave, and that is... Definitely the positive part about having a Sivir in your lineup is the fact that you can just shove minion waves so quickly. This is what seems to be what we've been talking about mostly today, has been Sivir's ability to clear out a minion wave, but it's just so imperative in her kit as far as making her such a high priority pick at the moment. Yeah, and I guess that can be accredited due to the amount of Sivers that we have actually had to witness in this game. And yeah. Only recently Had the seeing, pleasure of witnessing. Had the pleasure of witnessing, of course, not having to bear it or anything. It was, <laughs> it was great. Tolerated some Sivers. <laughs> well, there's just been so much Siver that there's been no real priority in the pick and ban phase around this Siver. And only the last game did we actually see a ban come out. The first one in the LPL summer so far. And yeah. given the win rate she has, I'm surprised it hasn't been more. Yeah, Vici really... Having their brains connected effectively. As you can see, EDG have lost their gold advantage here at this stage of the game. I believe Fawn probably going to go pick up his Mana Mew now. And at what point does this EDG team comp scale up? I mean, we understand the fact that Vici Gaming probably want to pick up a few items and then they're happy to fight around that mid game, wait for carry to get a bit tanky dandy as well, but then they're ready to go. How about EDG? EDG is going to be, for the most part, working around the items that the Corky finishes. He's the only one in the team, besides the Hecarim, who has the big spikes. So he gets that Trinity Force, he spikes massively. He gets the Sork Shoes with that directly after. It's a mini spike again. And at these situations, at these times, you can fight quite well as EDG. They've got the Eve with the Sheen at the moment, so nothing massive. Warrior Sheen, I guess it'll be another Trinity Force spike as well. So they're opting into these big spike timings. Yeah. And at 15 minutes into the game, they're not really going to be in a position where they want to fight. Edward Gaming are going to get... I mean, at the moment, they've got a Hecarim, Eve, and Corky. The Varus will be going for a Last Whisper most likely afterwards. They've all got these big timings. And I said they don't spike. I take that back because they're all going to be getting Trinity Forces. Yeah, they're going to try and get the Trinity Forces at relatively similar times as Mako's going to notice that Vici are starting off this dragon. Of course, I say starting, it's down to about 1,100 health as Carry finds his way into this fight. Deft is very, very healthy. Chains of Corruption find Marta here as well as Piercing Light. 
Piercing Arrow, sorry, trying to do some work. Nice Nar into the wall. Amazing Jay goes down very quickly. Clear Love right in amongst his fight. Double kill with the Piercing Arrow, though. Hail to come in at the same time. And Endless, he's in trouble. Pawn just flashes forward. Deft picks up the kill in the end. A triple kill for this Varus coming from the mid lane. And Mako took down Carry. Beautiful fight from EDG. You have to question the teleport positioning right there from Carry straight in the face of the AD carry and support you of EDG and Mako and Death's face, and he just had to jump straight out. The Chains of Corruption came in, hitting the support, but then bouncing to every single member of VT Gaming's lineup. And that put them all in a bad position. Without the jump available that he just used in carry, it's really difficult for you to hit that nah. And after that, the rest of it just started to crumble. The Chains of Corruption was absolutely perfect. Yeah, wonderful stuff from Pawn, making sure that he Got everything down that he needed to. The double kill with the piercing arrow as well, now that that's leveled up. And let's have a look at it again. So you can see the Nah only able to hit one person. They're already so low, because by this stage, they'd been completely chunked out by the Varus and the Corky. Eve got a great ultimate off to start the fight. And from here on out, it was massively on cleanup duty for them. Yeah, and Point, you saw flashing forward for the triple kill. So three, one, and two now for this Varus. And... Hasn't even been back to base just yet, so more than happy just to sit on these couple of items, scale up that man immune as best they can. Vici Gaming now understanding the fact that Clear Love has to show himself at some point, but Clear Love is going to notice the fact that he was discovered by that ward, or just not, not even scared about it. Doesn't even feel the need to clear the ward, I guess. No. I guess that's confidence for you, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. 2,000 gold, though, is the lead here for EDG. Vici did take the dragon. That is the big deal. So dragons have been equalized. Is Pawn going to head through and try and clear out this minion wave? But Mata and Hatong going to try and deter him from doing too much to this one. Doesn't quite get to the back line with that piercing arrow. And Vici just, I guess, brute forcing the mid lane. Yeah, it's the best way to describe it. Pushing Varus out of the range to use his piercing arrow to clear any minions. They're going to get this mid turret. It's going to allow them a lot of freedom in rotations. And it seems to me as though they're opting towards the top lane next in their rotations. Yeah, Seems like uh, the Marta train has begun. As Amazing J looking to actually get aggressive on carry. May have chose a pretty poor timing for this one as Marta's going to come around. Nice dredge line and the Nah back into the wall. The unstoppable, the onslaught of shadows, sorry, not that unstoppable here as the boomerang just going to head back and net endless another kill. The Atatar are going to fall in the top lane as well. The Hecarimolt actually getting stopped in his tracks right there. <laughs> Directly in the middle of them. He just chose a very unfortunate time an unfortunate time to be aggressive. Yeah. He spent a little bit of time away from the lane, put a ward down and made sure that he at least thought he was safe. They came from a very deep position in the jungle. They came around behind him when he wasn't ready for it, didn't have all of his spells available, and that was a very smart rotation there. Yeah, a bit of a silly time to start a fight here as well, but EDG, they are going to rip through the jungle of Vici Gaming after taking down the outer turret in the mid lane at the same time. So EDG picked up a couple of turrets there as well after Vici was moving around this themselves. So as you can see, the gold lead's still in EDG's favor just by a little bit. And Pawn just head back and picked up some boots and of course a Last Whisper outright. Yeah, so he's got that Last Whisper. Corky 005 has the Trinity Force available now as well. Once they get that... Oh, amazing Jay. Oh, he's in a bad position yet. Oh, oh, never mind. Yep. Thank you very much, Standy. As Amazing J is going to just canter away from this one as the death sentence not quite available. No, very unlucky again, I suppose. It was a smart rotation. They're not stopping just yet. They're looking to go towards the blue buff. Yeah, looking to try and secure that one as Amazing J mm, was able no. to maneuver out of the way. Opting to just recall. And they're going to look to continue to siege in the mid lane pawn. Just going to be a pest, and you can oh see how goodness. much damage it's starting to do now. He's got that last whisper and a lot of armor penetration. There's no point even having armor runes at this stage. You basically just want health. Yeah, that's true. He's going to be ripping these uh, Vici Gaming members apart. And now with the, um, I guess, armor penetration build, do you think about maybe picking up the um, Black Cleaver on Avaris? I don't think it's necessarily worth it. What yeah. you can do, though, which is a good idea, is instead of even going for the Trinity Force on the Hecarim, you could forego that and go for the Black Cleaver. Yeah, That's a smart team decision. It's not going to give you the kill pressure as much as you would normally have. It'll still give you kill pressure. It'll still give you move speed, so it's not a bad choice for Hecarim. 
And then it also allows the Varus and the Corky with extra armor reduction on the person that the Hecarim's hitting. They'll do more damage. Um, Clearlove as well has finished his Trinity Force. It's just going to so be a lot of Trinity Forces. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're looking to spike in the mid game, Atlas. I think that spiking in the mid game is a thing. I think Clearlove is also just having fun. He's decided. To, I, don't, I don't know. I don't. I, I like it. But of course, the tanky items after the Warrior Enchant do tend to be the, the standard choice for Clearlove. But oh, the depth charge here as Pawn's going to flash out of the way. Nice change of the corruption. Is it going to be enough to stop her tongue, though, as he just gets the slow? But that was all he needs, and everything blown. And that is most definitely a dead mid laner. As Amazing J trying to come through for the flank. Marta, he's going to get destroyed as the Descends comes in. And Deft, he's turned on that Gatling gun. But Vici able to get a nice position around here. That big one did a bunch of damage as Deft is trying to poke them from afar. But EDG, they do get the position and stop Vici from crashing in on their turrets. Not a whole lot of ultimates available for either sides here. So much used to get Pawn down. And they used the Petrifying Gaze just for a slow to allow yeah. the body slam to hit. It was definitely an all or nothing situation to get that virus and they did get him. They've got control now a little bit of the area, but given that nobody really has ultimates available, it still could go either way in the next fight very soon. Yeah, and Pawn, as you mentioned, Varus is heading towards this dragon now at this stage. Vici looking to try and clear out the vision. Five to seven in kills, thousand gold still the difference here. As EDG are ahead by just a little bit. Amazing J trying to find his way back in. But Vici, they are going to secure the dragon. But is it going to be a repeat of last time? Or EDG going to be able to find their way into a fight? Amazing J is here, but no ultimate available at this point. Death Sentence not going to find the mark. And looks like Vici are going to be able to escape this one. So they pick up the second dragon for themselves and make it out unscathed. And they got the pick in the mid lane. Yeah, it all started from the pick in the mid lane. They get that first kill. They start to get control at the very least of a bit of the area. You can see all of the ward coverage is in favor of EDG, but it's just the confidence knowing that it's going to take a little while for the Varus to get back to the dragon area. They had the Meganar perfectly timed, so EDG opting not to fight that situation too full on and only looking to get the Varus to do some damage prior to the fight allowed VG Gaming to walk away essentially unscathed. Yeah, it sounds... Pretty intelligent to me, wanting to fight around the, um, the Mega Nar form, and of course, EDG not wanting to at the same time. So that's what's going to come of it. Of course, Deft has now picked up the Blade of the Ruin King on his Corky. Wants to be able to eat through the health of these tanks as best he possibly can. Of course, didn't really like the item pickup, but, but uh, as the Blade of the Ruin King has been changed just a little bit to be a little bit more on hit, kind of like it. Yeah, it's, it, it provides a different thing. Essentially, you choose between them. Am I going to be taking a lot of burst damage? Or am I going to be dealing it and need the active health regen to come back in? Are they going to be in my face? So he's opting towards the Blade of the Ruin King. Does more damage now, that is true. He's even got a pink ward. He's very confident, putting them all down. And they want to secure vision around this spike in items. They've got the Trinity Force done on two of the three champions. Hecarim, I'm guessing he has a lot of money and he's looking to spend that very soon after he gets this turret because he has been sitting on that Glacial Shroud for quite a while. Yeah, but still split pushing relentlessly. This is the amazing J way. As Endless is in the bottom lane, is possibly going to be able to pick up this inner turret. In fact, he is. No one's in the area whatsoever. No teleport for Amazing J to speak of. And EDG, are they thinking about possibly just trading it for a Baron? Well, we do know they like their 20 minute yeah. Barons. And this is pretty late by their standards, apparently. So it's a possibility, but they do have the means to at least be aware of it and stop it this time. They weren't as aware of it last time, so it was more of a surprise Baron. And being on the red side as well makes it a lot harder for you to sneak that Baron. When they're on blue side, you get more natural control of the Baron area. You can walk in with a single pink water opposed to many. Yeah, well, it's true. And I guess if you are on the blue side as well, you've got multiple entrances towards that yeah. Baron pit. So you're not going to get funneled here like the EDG lineup may potentially get which would be a dream come true here for a Tong who's able to throw out that Miasma now in the mid lane and just try and clear out these ones. But Deft, now with the Blade of the Ruin King in the boots, it's pretty safe. But what does a winning team fight look like here for EDG? Do they need the flanks? Do they need to have Amazing J and Clear Love coming in at the same time into the back line and get things going on? Because Hatong seems to be the linchpin for this team at the moment. And I think if his petrifying gaze is going to be useful, then it might even be that when Amazing J and Clear Love come through, if they just get instantly destroyed by that, there's not going to be a whole lot the squishy members of EDG can do. 
Well, Clear Love and Amazing J have opted for different item builds almost completely here. Trinity Force on the Eve, she's going to be flanking 100%. There's no way to brute force your way in at them as an Eve right now if you only have the Trinity Force and Warrior enchantment. Yep. You don't really have tanky stats whatsoever, so you're going to be a little bit on cleanup duty. They're relying on Pawn and Death to poke. They're relying on the people that they're going to be fighting against to not have as much health as they would normally have to enable the Hecarim Unstoppable Onslaught and enable the Eve Ultimate to come through at the same time and catch them I guess a little bit off guard, but also in a position where they can't fight because Pawn's poke is massive. Yeah, well, it's true. Now picked up a Brutalizer here as well, so we're going to be at 40% CDR, I believe. Oh, no, he's only at about 25. We'll see what he's got as far as those runes, runes are concerned. But also with the Distortion Enchantment, so we're going to have that flash up as much as possible. Needs it for as many team fights as he can, of course. Varus, notorious for not having too much mobility. Mm. Wouldn't be surprised if after this Ghost Blade, which is what it seemingly will yeah. become right now, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes for the Bloodthirster next. You're not really renowned for using all of the life steal that you get, but the Overshield will help against the Cassiopeia, who has a lot of burst right now, yeah. actually going for a Revolver. Wow, okay, so Will of the Ancients going to possibly be the next option here for Hatong, making sure that he can augment what uh, Spell Vamp he already has. As Teleport's going to come through. Vici, they've started up the Baron. Everyone seems to know that Cassiopeia does a heck of a lot of damage. Agony's Embrace is going to be used. Oh, Clear Love went for the steal, but didn't get there. Flash for it. Amazing J now says it's his turn to die as he gets melted apart. EDG, they do land the Chains of Corruption. Pawn looking to try and get something going on here as he's turning around, trying to get some DPS through, but... It's not over yet. Yeah, Vici looking to try and get out of here. Deft, very aggressive with the two only members of EDG with any sort of tanky statistics. Chasing after them, but Vici just going to empower Recall back to base. Two kills and a Baron. This, they're now in the lead as far as the gold, and they're going to be able to pick up more from this. There's a massive wave in the top lane. They've got creeps that they need to pick up there on the bottom side, but Vici now able to siege. Vici in a very good position at the moment, and I do question the Eve pick in this particular instance. They've gone for the Varus and the Corky combo, so they're looking for a lot of poke. They needed another big front line with Amazing J to be able to live, and Amazing J's gone straight for tank. He's foregone any damage items. He's gone straight for that Frozen Heart. The Spectre's Cal, either a Spirit Visage or Banshee's coming out next. But the Eve has a Trinity Force. Yeah. And you're not really going to be able to tank anything with a Trinity Force, and you're required to tank for your team at the moment. So I do question whether the Eve pick or whether the Eve build, more importantly, was the right decision. You can see that Vici are basically running across them. The second that the front line is dead from EDG, they have to sit back, poke, and try their best not to get caught. Yeah, well, the thing was, is I guess Clear Love was going for the hero steal and then yeah. just died on his own. It wasn't, I guess, the idyllic situation for an Evelyn. So we haven't really seen what a team fight on EDG's terms looks like, but I think you're exactly right. I think that Clear Love was a little bit greedy with that uh, particular build. A lot of fun, and I definitely approve. Oh, it's Trinity fun. Yeah, exactly. So, brilliant one. Oh, Dredgeline not going to find Deft as he's trying to clear out these barrened up minions. Amazing Jay, he's going to get right in amongst it, though, as Marta gets taken down. Very, very low pawn, trying to charge up the snipes as Endless getting taken down. And, oh my goodness, that was actually Mako that picked up that kill. Hatong now trying to get some of his health back. Pawn just getting smacked about by Carry Dandy in trouble. But he's not because they've turned around everything. Vici managed to ace EDG and they're going to lose their bottom lane inhibitor turret as well. Vici Gaming looking brilliant. This revolver is a master stroke right here from Hatong. He gets engaged on, knocked towards the rest of the EDG side and he just sustains it all back up. They've got the Baron minions and there's 10 seconds on the next person. They may be able to end very soon. They may potentially. They've decided that they're not going to, not going to push their luck this time around. They've picked themselves up a 3,000 gold lead. Three dragons now to one as well in favor of Vici Gaming. Double the turrets of EDG. And EDG are most definitely on the ropes at this stage because you saw Pawn just sitting at the wrath of carry. There was nothing he could do to that Nara. Nas, he's pulled, a, I guess, a page out of the EDG playbook and he's building a Trinity Force as well. <laughs> he's definitely... Got the zeal, the makings of a Trinity Force. It just seems to be 
the Trinity Force League at the moment. Everyone just wants one on every champion. And you do have to give a lot of credit to Carry in that last fight. Knocking Pawn out of the base and then stunning yeah. him outside of the base again in a bad position for so long. There was nothing he could do. He had to focus on himself and living. And by that time, the rest of the EDG lineup was already gone. Yeah, nothing they could do. And Pawn now has a pick up, pickaxe in the item build. So possibly going towards that Infinity Edge, but maybe even the likes of a more of Malmordius, which I wouldn't mind here if he's going to be facing the Wrath of Hatong. But possibly an Infinity Edge. I like that. As a Talon player, he probably likes the fourth item, Infinity Edge. Mako is going to use his Flay, but he's going to get caught back into the team and dismantled. Man, Vici making short work of this one. As soon as Hatong can deal with a, I guess, CC'd up target, does not last very long, and Mako getting caught out of position once more. Def trying to throw some poke through, but Baron's worn off. Vici now going to try and use their numbers advantage in this top side. The inner turret is most definitely going to fall, but can they pick up another inhibitor? Vici Gaming seem to be entirely in control at the moment. The one, the one inhibitor down, they've got the top... They find a kill with Siva and Grag Assaults again. Their team comp is perfect around what they want to do, and that is get kills, make a pick. Because they're up against a poke comp, all you need is one of them to be dead. And then it, you find it so much easier to be able to siege or push. And Clear Love is just poking his head around at the moment. He might want to engage from behind. He's looking for something potentially. Nice spell shield from Endless, but he doesn't have them as He's often as there. Pawn has the spell shields. He's getting corralled a little bit. Clear Love looking to try and pick up some form of engage as the Raptors are going to be attempted here by Dandy. Hatong heading over, picks up the Raptor with some Miasma and some Noxious Blasts. Very nice there from Dandy, foregoing the extra 30 gold that he would have received in order to funnel it into Hatong. 6, 1, and 5 on this Cassiopeia. Massive items as well with that Void Staff and the Rabbiton's Death Cap, as well as the Seraph's Embrace, which is completed. Heading back to base now, possibly to finish the Will of the Ancients. Maybe anything else as well. Luden's Echo? I don't know. What's he going to grab? Not entirely sure. We'll see what he decides to pick up. As That is Will of the Ancients. Boring. Would have loved to see a Luden's Echo. Will of the Ancients and a Void Staff out of a Revolver and a Blasting Wand. He already had the Void Staff. Did he? Yeah. Oh, well, my bad. Yeah. He's picked up the Will of the Ancients. It's going to help the Cassiopeia an awful lot. He's doing so much work at the moment. 6, 1, and 5. You have to praise Hatong. I cannot praise him enough right now. In the second game against EDG, getting a pentacle in the first game. Yeah. Absolutely phenomenal amount of work towards allowing his team to, at the very least, be in it in the last game. And now they're ahead. Yeah, and Pawn, he's now picked up the QSS. So it's definitely a good item. The pickaxe sort of sitting there doing nothing now as Dandy just treating the EDG jungle like his own. This is the first time that we've seen EDG without control of the map for quite some time here in the LPL, but definitely doing a great job of Ichi Gaming of really strangling EDG out of their options. 3,000 gold is still the lead here. It seems like Vici probably more than happy to sit back, wait for the next Baron, understand that they have the control of the map at the moment and move forward that way. Vici. Have they decided they just want to go for a pick? I'm not entirely sure. Is Clear Love is being sneaky? Hmm. They will most likely look towards this dragon. In fact, they have started up. They've got Cassiopeia, so it's done extremely quickly, and they can afford to the second that EDG drops their guard. They've got the split pusher carry doing his best amazing Jay impersonation right now, trying his hardest to push it into the base. And there's already one turret down in the Nexus. And EDG are in a very bad position to be able to defend that. If they recall, then the Baron's a possibility. Yeah, and Carry has his teleport, but Amazing J doesn't. This is the big deal. So Carry now looking to try and teleport in. He is going to use it right now. Enough. The inhibitor has respawned. So Vici now with positional advantage around this Baron buff. Carry, he's found Pawn. Nice flash over the wall there to avoid any Nars that are going to be coming in. But Mako is going to be forced to flash as well. Nice double piercing arrow damages. Marta is going to try and clear out some vision. Vici still together as a unit, but they're getting chased by the arrow potential of Pawn. As EDG trying to make their way around here. And EDG don't like it when you take away their Barons. Baron is their favorite thing in the world. And if you're <laughs> taking Baron from them, they're going to be upset. The minions actually take down the inhibitor here. EDG going to have to make a move. 
Yeah, EDG needed to do something a lot sooner there, but they couldn't do it because VG Gaming were just backing off. I saw the pings going down onto that inhibitor quite a while earlier, and they now, I believe, know at the very least that Hecarim is in that base. Yeah. They can decide to fight, they can decide to do Baron, they can rotate to Dragon. It's entirely in their hands. They've opted for the Baron, and watch how fast this Cassiopeia takes it down. Yeah, Hatong is just ripping through this one. The piercing arrow is going to come through there. Nice damage from the poke of EDG. Cass has no ult now. Yeah, did yeah. she just use the... Yeah. I didn't see the Petrifying Gaze there at all. As Kalilov, he's going to tank this one up now. Nice change of corrupts, and Marta is tanking that one completely. Amazing J finds his way into the fight, immediately destroys Hatong as EDG. They're still losing a whole lot of health here as Pawn. He's decimating the Vici Gaming lineup almost by himself there in the back line. Kalilov dies as an afterthought as a triple kill comes in for Carry. He's super low though as EDG. They're trying to clean up Deft. He's got a big amount of damage. He's trying to kill some Raptors now at this stage. So the tricksy dandy is possibly going to survive. But that is a team fight victory here for EDG. But what was Endless doing? He's now taking a dragon. He's always got something to do. Hot fingers wanting to do as much as possible for his team. And though it was lost, he left the fight quite early, acknowledging that it was down. And straight away taking that dragon and deft, coming around throwing rockets, realizing that the dragon's not there just yet. But that fight... A little bit awkward that Hatong accidentally used his ultimate backwards, not even on the Baron. Oh my he goodness. He misclicked the ultimate. And that was almost the entire reason, I believe, as to why that fight ended up becoming in favor of EDG. It was two for three, and they weren't necessarily on high health at the end of the fight either. Uh, Vici now looking to just do the same thing ag again. Sorry. They've still got control because the bottom inhibitor's down. It's the ideal inhibitor to do a Baron as well because it's on the opposite side of the map. Yeah, Onslaught of Shadows is available here. Baron down to half health. EDG know that they cannot lose this one. Piercing Arrow, lots of damage onto Hatong, a massively high priority target. And now across the members of the team and Deft and Pawn, they've got so much poke available to them that Look at the Gaming. Top blue dots. Yeah, well, this is the thing. The fact that the minion wave control is in such favor of Vici Gaming means that they now go. just move forward and they just probably take down the Nexus, which is now almost entirely <laughs> exposed. The minions just took down the turret by themselves. The top blue dots are getting that top turret. It may go down without Hecarim being able to stop it. It's getting very low. Oh, he's trying to tank them up. You can see piercing arrows again coming over the team. EDG, are they just going to wait for this one? The Baron is taken by Hatong and Mako found himself caught out. Pawn gets not into the wall and destroy. Clearlov is probably going to die. He's not the tanky Evelyn that we're used to seeing as death. He's going to get stunned against the wall for almost what looks like forever. Nice use of heal. Phosphorus Bomb gets him a consolation kill. But EDG have been aced. They only lose Dandy and Vici Gaming are going to pick up the second game. And once again... Vici split. They lose the first game, win the second, and doesn't matter who they're against by the looks of things. Apparently so. It does not matter who they're against. They're going to go one and one in that fight. I wish I had a replay of it right now. The Cassiopeia with that Will of the Ancients was oh, getting yeah. 200 health back every single Twin Fang. No one could kill her even though she had no health. The rest of the side instantly killing Pawn. A great NAR ultimate. Vici Gaming look amazingly strong. It's Hong. Everyone's on his back right now. Yeah, and Hatong has been looking fantastic. This series really was all about Hatong. It was fantastic to see. Even his Azir game in the first, uh, Azir play in the first game was wonderful to see. That Pentakill was definitely something fantastic. And now the Cassiopeia really looking good. And Pawn, he had some great moments there on the Varus, but I think that, you know, that particular team come from EDG possibly could have been workshopped a little bit more. Yeah, I do have to question the entirety of the team comp. Maybe a particular champion could have been changed, whether it was the Varus, which did still do great work. It just wasn't working with the rest of his team well enough. Maybe. Or the Eve, perhaps, who didn't provide the hard engage or the tankiness that was really required from the EDG roster. They did all that they could, and there was a couple glimpses of team fights where they started to look so very strong. Vici Gaming just took it away from them. A massive game from them. Yeah, fantastic work from VG Gaming. But ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of the LPL for this particular week. But on behalf of myself, Rusty, pa Papa Smithy, and Pastry Time, and of course our whole production crew, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week.